The Mobile County Public School System presents Home Room with Nancy Pierce. Welcome to Home Room. I'm Nancy Pierce, Public Relations Supervisor for the Mobile County Public School System. So glad to have you with us today. This is a big month. Of course, school has started. We started a month ago. We're in the full swing of things. Attendance is so important, not just in September, every day during the school year, but September is a very important month for attendance. So I have several guests on today and I can't wait for you to meet them and you probably know, know them, but Terrence Mixon, who is over Student Support Services, which includes just about everything. Good to have you here, Thank have you, you. back. Thank Terrence you. thinks I pick on him and I bring him on all the time, <laughs> but that's not true. It's because you're so good and you do so many things. I'll try to keep that in mind. Uh, okay. okay, and don't ever turn me down. Clem Richardson, he is a principal at Baker High School. Good to have you here, Clem. This is your first time. Isn't it, it is. Thank you for uh, asking me. You are welcome, and I will be gentle. Well, I, I'm usually okay. pretty gentle. Usually. Okay. <laughs> We're going to have to talk after this. September is our attendance month. Correct. Is that from the state, from the feds? Who, from us, who's that from? September is the National School Attendance Month. Okay. Our state superintendent sent down a request um, that all schools would do something to acknowledge uh, the importance of school attendance, just to raise the awareness throughout the community with our students, with our parents, and everybody, how important it is for students to come to school and come to school every day. When we talk about attendance, you aren't talking about just learning. You're talking about uh, factors that really can hamper the schools as far as number of teachers, things like that, correct? Yes, ma'am. That, that. That, that is correct. Um, our schools uh, receive their teacher units mm -hmm. based on the amount of students they have enrolled. That counting period actually began yesterday mm -hmm. and will continue for the next 20 days. Uh, it is important to our entire school system as other funds, as federal funds, right. are based on the number of students that are in school. Certainly our state funds, the at-risk funds that uh, come through my office are based on the number of students that we have. And uh, we would just like for our parents to understand that not only is it important for um, their child's education, mm -hmm. but it's certainly as important for the resources that come into the district. And we all need to keep that in mind, and parents really do. Now, we don't want kids to come to school when they're sick, of course. Right. But if they aren't sick, if they they think they're sick, well, old trick that my mom used to use when I'd say, I don't feel well, and I bet <laughs> yours did too. Yeah. Why don't you get dressed and see how you feel after you, you're dressed and you eat breakfast? Right. Right. Well, by then, you figure you might as well go, right? Well, that's, that's, that's <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. I think it works really well. Yes, ma'am. It do. <laughs> Clem, as far as Baker High School, you are the biggest high school, the biggest school in Mobile County. We are. How many students do you have? We have 2,674. Wow. We're, we're up about 150 students from last year, and last year we were the second largest in the state behind Hoover. And I'm not sure what their growth or deduction has been, but we're, we're probably going to be the second largest again. Wow. That's, that's unbelievable. I, we, we are the biggest county, and we have the second biggest, and eventually probably the first biggest high school. That's amazing. Um, as, as far as the growth for Baker, where did it come from? A lot of people moving out there, out it, to your area. It is a uh, westward movement. This is my 12th year at Baker, mm -hmm. and we've grown about 100 students every year. When I came to Baker 12 years ago, we had 1,350. Oh my goodness. So now we're about 100, 100 a year. Uh, and it, it mostly growth. We uh, we do we do have about 250 students on transfer. Mm -hmm. A lot of those students move in in the middle school or elementary and stay through the Baker feeder pattern. Right. But the majority of it is just westward growth of Mobile. That's that is tr I cannot imagine 2,600. But it's a you run a great ship. Well, it's thank a you. tight ship. You do really well. The kids do really well, and you have great attendance at your school. We do. Uh, in high school, attendance is tied to Carnegie units and credits, which you have to earn in order to graduate. Okay. So attendance is very important. Uh, you've got to be there every day to be able to do the work and, be, and award that credit. And, of course, the credits accumulate, which lead to graduation. Mm -hmm. On-time graduation is something that's important, and so we stress attendance so we can have those on-time graduates for our graduation rate. You know. And we are certainly 
pushing that this year as far as on-time graduation rate, students graduating, period. Oh, yeah. um, Carnegie units, what, explain that to me. I know what credits are. When you, when you, that's, that's the take, state, that's the term that the state uses for awarding credits. Okay. Once you move into high school, uh, a Carnegie unit is awarded when you meet the requirements for completing a course. And attendance is a tie to that. Do you have many students that, um, that don't show up that you have to go and talk to their parents or, you know, what are, answer that first. Do you have many students that, that shall we say, skip? We, we, we don't have that many. Mm -hmm. uh, our graduation rate was 90% last year. That's and we great. Were, we were real proud of that. So most of our students are there doing what we asked mm -hmm. of them, going to class, earning those credits, moving toward graduation. So I, we're blessed to be in a very good school where the kids are, are coming and the parents are supporting us and supporting their children. What sorts of things do you have at Baker that you think really attracts the kids and keeps them there? Well, with the growth, we started the Freshman Academy concept mm -hmm. years ago, and we do a lot of the things for attendance in the Freshman Academy because that is that critical age and that critical grade where you start to t see a lot of dropouts. Why, why is that? You know, I've heard that, what, fifth grade is tough, even going from kindergarten to first grade, but I've heard ninth grade is difficult. So why is, why? Do you, well, do you the, have any the, idea why? Well, one of the biggest things is high school students are expected to have a higher level of maturity because of the open environment of a high school campus. Sure. Uh, elementary and middle school are still restricted. They're, they go to class and walk from class to class. Mm -hmm. They sit with their teacher during lunch. In high school, when the bell rings, that? in high school, when the bell rings, it's go to your next class. Okay. So we need we have to work with those students to show that level of maturity, to accept that, and to be a responsible young adult. So your ninth grade academy, do they all stay together though for that ninth grade for the academy? Pretty much, we have them isolated in one part of the campus, mm -hmm. uh, away from the main building. They come to the campus for PE, for ROTC, band. They have to come over for lunch, but except for that, uh, they have electives out there. They have their own assistant principal that is over the academy. We have a counselor out there. So they're a school within a school right. on our campus. How do they then make the transition from ninth grade to um, to 10th grade? And we're about to go, we have to go into a break. So let's think about that. We'll talk about it when we come right back. So, Nicholas, how was your day at school today? It was great. We had fun in class today. So, what did you do differently today at school? I mean, anything, any new projects? We got a progress report today. You got your progress reports today? So how did you do? Uh, don't know. You don't know. That's okay. We can check that right here. Wow. Nicholas. I'm Ashley Rich. Welcome Maybe back to Homeroom. We are talking about attendance, a, a very important dolls. subject in our school system throughout, well, really school systems throughout the country. We depend on financial um, fi financial aid, not aid, but money from the federal government, state money, um, all sorts of different things. And teacher units, so important. We've discussed that and we're talking about a ninth grade academy at Baker High School. Sitting with me, Terrence Mixon, who's over student services. Um, and that would take probably a half hour if I went through all the things that you do. That's and me. then also, <laughs> Clem Richardson, who's a principal of Baker, the biggest high school in Mobile County and the second in the state, and probably, well, that wouldn't surprise me if you take over as the first. So Clem, we were talking about the fact you have a ninth grade academy, and that's where all your ninth grade students are. What about the transition from ninth grade to 10th grade? Does that, does it make, I guess it would make it easier doesn't it? It does. Uh, in the ninth grade, we, we tend to work with those students in 
growing up to be young adults. You know, that's what we say. You're not a little kid anymore. Right. We're not holding your hand. We're not walking to your class. You, you're a young adult now, and you're moving to a phase of your life where you need to be a more responsible young man mm -hmm. or young lady. So we try to teach them that in the, ten, in the ninth grade, knowing that when they come to the 10th grade, you are a young adult, and these expectations are going to be up here. And the majority of the kids that come over, uh, they've learned, they've accepted what high school is, they've mm -hmm. settled in, and they're there now to get their education and graduate and move on out into society. I, th I think it's a wonderful idea. I think ninth grade academies are fabulous. We've talked mm -hmm. so much about how, how ninth grade is such a pivotal time that if you're going to stay in school, you'll probably stay in school, but if you aren't, that's when you usually leave. Um, is it just because it's such a transition? You're going from still the hand holding with your teachers, not so much, but, but it's not as difficult in middle school as it is in high school. Is that it? Well, I think of some of it also, um, parents kind of release some of their uh, strictness, sure. if you will, mm -hmm. after the, the kids get to high school. Um, I don't want to say they're hands off, but as Mr. Richardson has just indicated, that the level of maturity is kind of expected at the school as well as at home. And uh, having teenagers myself, I know that at the age of 14, they're not quite ready, ready. yet to be released. Mm -hmm. And uh, if our parents would kind of stay as engaged with their students uh, in, in the ninth grade particularly as they have in earlier grades, it makes a big, big difference in that kid's success. Uh, do you think parents think that by the time they get to high school, they should be ready? It's time for them to go? I think they think Kick that they are. Kick them out of the nest. But, but they, uh, in reality, they're really not. And with high school becoming more difficult now, mm -hmm. with Common Core now being what we actually do as far as curriculum, uh, it's important that parents understand and kids understand there's just not that much downtime anymore. Right. And uh, what they do at school, from take-in bail to dismissal bail, that time is crucial and they need to take, it, take advantage of it. Right. And I know you have so many activities at school with band and, and you have some of the women that are in young, um, that are in junior, junior miss and uh, Zelia Trail and things like that, that it's, it can be difficult to try. You've got to figure out, when do I do my homework? When do I do this? And that's got to be difficult for time management. Is that taught in the, in the um, ninth grade academy? We, this year, we bought and supplied planners for all of our ninth graders. Mm -hmm. And they're required to have their planner, use their planner, so that those organizational skills will start there in the ninth grade. Uh, with so many things going on, we, we really encourage our kids to get involved in clubs because when you have a school our size, some kids kind of feel like they're getting lost in the shuffle. Right. But a club brings kids of common interest together, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now they meet new friends with common interests. So club meetings, ball games, uh, pep rallies, uh, classroom assignments. You know, we make them put everything in their planner, which tries to give them the opportunity to become organized. I think that's great. We probably ought to start it in great. kindergarten or first grade, maybe. We need to take another break. We will be back, so stay tuned. Nonviolence will start with me. Nonviolence will start with me. All across the Mobile County public school system, students are taking the pledge. I pledge to accept the responsibility of my actions. To solve problems peacefully. Respect myself and others. The 100 Days of Nonviolence Pledge is an initiative to help explore alternative means of stopping violence among school students. Will you take the challenge? Get involved. Take a stand. 100 Days, 100 Ways. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy-saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. 
When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Welcome back to Homeroom. So glad you stayed with us. We are talking about something very important. If you have children, if you have uh, nieces, nephews, grandchildren, this is so important. And I know you remember when you were growing up, we're talking about attendance and being at school every single day, it is so important. Joining me right now, Suzanne Christ, who is a fabulous principal at Dodge, Dr. Christ, she is at Dodge Elementary, and Johnny Adams, wonderful principal at Burns Middle School. So good to have you two. Thanks, Thank thanks you. for inviting us. I know you've been here with me, but you, I don't know if no, you I have haven't. Johnny haven't. well. We'll, we'll be day. kind, won't we? Yes, okay, okay. we will. Um, attendance is so important. It is important in elementary school, it's important in middle school, it's important in high school. September, we're hitting real hard on attendance. How, what are you two doing at school to let parents know that make sure in September, but every day, what, do, what are you doing with, to let your parents know that they need to get their kids in school? Well, you know, we're real involved with the social, social media, mm -hmm. with uh, Twitter and Facebook, and so we're sending out reminders about that. Um, but we're also tr really working on student leadership with our students, as many elementary schools are. So we make those daily announcements about boys and girls, make sure you get here and you're here on time. Um, one thing that we like to encourage parents to do is uh, because, you know, elementary children are dependent on their parents sure. uh, to get to school because unlike high school, they don't drive or anything, mm -hmm. so they are dependent on that. But is to, you know, think about getting your things ready at night. Lay your uniforms out. Get everything packed up in your book bag so that the morning is an easy time for you and you can not be rushed and you can come to school with a positive attitude. I think if you do that... I we should all do that, grown-ups, I don't care how old we are. But I think if you do that, if kids have stomach aches in the morning, it might be because they don't have time to get they're ready so and they're rushed. nervous. Mm -hmm. What am I gonna do? The bus is coming in two minutes and I have no idea where my shoes are. So that, you know, I think that's a great idea. Wonderful. Have you had any trouble with attendance? You know, we, at Dodge, we have really good attendance. Mm -hmm. We usually every year are between 96 and 97 percent average for the school year. So right. that's great attendance for our students. Um, one of the things that we are really focus on at Dodge are those uh, tardies yeah. and early dismissals. Sure. Because, you know, sometimes you just have to calculate up the time. If you leave 30 minutes early, five days in a month, you've missed almost a mm -hmm. half a day of full instruction. That's a lot. That's a lot. Definitely mm -hmm. is a lot. Johnny, let me go to Johnny. Um, uh, as far as it burns, how, what are you doing to make sure your kids are getting here? Well, we try to do a good job of engaging students during the day in lessons. <clears throat> if we've got an engaging classroom with engaging teachers, we feel like in middle school it's so emotional for them that if you can make the atmosphere pleasant, make it engaging for them to come, a lot of kids stay at home because of incidents that have happened at school. They feel like they've been bullied or something. And you know, I've had a few here just the past week that you know it had stomach aches, didn't want to go to school, and there was something there was something going on at school. Mm -hmm. So for middle schooler, it's really important to make sure the environment is, is a positive environment, it's a safe environment, and we work on that. You know, that's something we work on every day in middle school. Every day, sure, <clears throat> sure. Do you, um, do you call your parents, either one of you, when you've had some absences at school and, and find, yeah. try to find out why? We do. We have a nurse mm -hmm. on campus, and um, oftentimes if we have a, a series of days out, she will call, or the teacher, you know, that, that elementary teacher is going to call and find out just about every time. Sometimes we know ahead of time. Right. Um, parents are really good to, a lot of parents are really good to send an email to the teacher and maybe copy it to me. We're going to be out for such and such a reason, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but but that's that's really important, and I agree with Mr. Adams on the engaging. If children are engaged in school and um, things are going smoothly, and they like what they're going they're doing, they're going to come back to school. Chances are, so I think that's um, definitely true. You have to yeah. you have to give them a safe environment right. where they feel good, they feel safe, but also one where they really want to learn. And right. I think education has changed a lot since I went to grade school, elementary school, and middle school, where you really are doing so many hands-on activities that the kids can just really take hold of that. Right. And if you don't do that, it's I, th I, think, I think people and kids still have to be excited about mm -hmm. something. 
and um, you know, and if you try, you know, if you engage them and make them excited and make them optimistic about what they're doing at school, they're gonna they're gonna enjoy coming more often. And those those moments at home, right before the parents trying to decide where well, should I send them, they're not feeling too good or something, you know, um, some of those moments <coughs> can go the R way, and, and they they come on to school because they're feeling good about going to school. Well, that's great. we uh, we have to take a quick break. Will you just sit here? Sure. Sit yeah. here. All right, we'll be right back. I saw Mr. Tillman's class. Just that quick little five minutes I had with him made me think that I really wanted to uh, use small engines. I just love tinkering with them. Just a uh, gearhead. Graduating from the Career Tech Center has allowed me to better myself, make more money, be more informed about uh, the trade that I'm going to be in. I just felt like doing a trade is just better than working in an office or something. I have to be outside working with my hand or something. MCPSS Career Tech. Start your future today. For me, it started back in 1942 when my family moved to Mobile and I began my uh, high school career at Murphy High School. Today, it's so important to be able to ingrain in yourself what are you going to do in future life and you need to be prepared. And so subsequently, everything at Murphy was very important in my life and so it, it was instrumental in preparing me for future life and future profession that I wanted to be in. Welcome back to Home Room. So glad you stayed with us. We're talking about something very important, attendance in schools. You could carry this over to attendance at your work, attendance just about anywhere. So joining me now again are Dr. Suzanne Christ from Dodge Elementary. She's a principal and Johnny Adams, who's a principal at Burns Safe, talked about some really great things about how they're keeping their kids uh, at school. You know, our philosophy this month and really the rest of the year is attend today and achieve tomorrow. And I want to read one thing about who's reading on grade level by the end of the third grade. About 64% of the students with satisfactory attendance in kindergarten and first grade. 17% of students who missed 18 or more days in kindergarten and first grade. So we're talking here about an incredible decrease in the learning and how they do on tests, things like that. Is that probably the biggest thing you both see is if they are not in school, their grades are gonna go down, which would make them maybe not wanna come again. So how can you and fight that, that? You know, that consistency right. of being there day in and day out and um, worrying about having to make things up. And then when you have to make something up, you're missing something when you're there. And so that consistency makes a, a, an incredible impact on them if they're there every day and that they're consistent with that learning pattern. So uh, I'd absolutely agree with that mm -hmm. statistic. And, and kids that transition from elementary or middle school, the, I, what I tell parents and kids, if they're at school every day, if they do every assignment they're assigned, they will make the same grades they made in elementary school. And that's part of the problem. If they're out, they just don't know to make things up. And the, we don't have any students that really can't pass middle school or mm -hmm. sixth grade. Um, most of the time it's just because they have incomplete work. Sure. It has nothing to do with their ability. How do you catch up? I, it is difficult <laughs> so to catch up. Yeah, it's hard on teachers. Oh, certainly it is. Um, it is. And parents. <clears throat> you know, sure. you think about if you've got three days to catch up on something you're doing tonight's assignment and the other assignments. Yeah. And so it's kind of double duty. Yeah, we keep a lot of kids in. We may keep them in on a teacher plan period mm -hmm. and they, they help the kids catch up. They, um, anytime, most, all in middle school, we have a thing where they have makeup folders on the wall and right. all their assignments from that week, a kid can go up and pick Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and mm -hmm. take that assignment out and just go ahead and get it and do it and then turn it back in, so. I think what I think about so often is if you miss Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you've missed three days of lessons, well, right. what if that part of the, uh, the subject that you're teaching is over and you're moving on to the next thing well what about those three days you know it, it, it right. how can you keep yeah. it all together they, it, it's, just, lost it. mm -hmm. it's just hard it's really hard to go back and find right. that although I think teachers um, do an incredible job and mm -hmm. students as well trying to catch up on that but it may be something that you know they it's, just missed it is difficult right. another thing uh, September really counts all the months count but Half the students who miss two to four days in the first month of school, this one is amazing, go on to miss nearly a month of school that year. Wow. Wow. 
say that's a new statistic for me. Uh, yeah, well, that, <laughs> and an incredible statistic. Yeah, it is. See, she, I had a mother that was a nurse, and mm -hmm. if I wasn't dying or bleeding, I went to school. <laughs> so uh, I had no excuses. Same here. My mother wasn't a nurse, but yeah, it was definitely you're going to school. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, we don't want kids to go to school if they're sick, right. because then right. if, if I'm <clears throat> sick, I'll get your, you sick, and you'll get him sick. But a lot of times, I think, when kids do say, oh, my tummy's not feeling well or something like that, Maybe there's something else bothering him, and it's really not the fact that they don't want to go to school. They right. probably would want to go to school, but there's something else in but the background. You know, that statistic about the first month of school, right. that's, the, that's the month where we build our relationships, mm -hmm. where students get to know their teachers and teachers get to know the students as well as you know, the student engagement. And so if you miss a lot of that time, you may miss out on that relationship, that crucial beginning mm -hmm. relationship building. And it may be a little more difficult throughout the whole school year. And a, and a lot of our apps, as we look at them, they're you know, Mondays and Fridays. And if we make, if we make those days, especially Mondays and especially Fridays, mm -hmm. real engaging, that, that we, we don't, you know, we teach every day and we got something going on right. every day and we're not taking Friday off and feel mm -hmm. like you can stay home. Or Friday That's afternoon. Huge. Right, or Friday, right. Afternoon. <laughs> Friday afternoon. We see a lot of Friday afternoon. Sure, right. sure. And uh, kids can just miss so much. When you think about, we talk a lot about how in summer kids miss so much. Right. And so the beginning of the year probably is a, a little catch up from summer too, isn't it? Yes. It is, yes, yeah. Yes, but you know, we do, we, we do a little bit, but we hit the road running and mm -hmm. yeah. so um, we're going on we may be doing a little review but then it's moving so on. So attend today achieve tomorrow. I mm -hmm. love that whole yeah. thing. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. But once again it's not just September. We're hitting September mm -hmm. hard partially because of the financial right. aspect to it right. and but also for the, for the kids we've mm -hmm. got to um, if parents take their children on a vacation for a week or two I cannot imagine yeah. coming back and being so far behind. Right. I'd be so frustrated. And you know, one of our goals is working with industry and trying to mm -hmm. get kids ready for careers, especially starting in middle school. We really push that hard, and you know, being consistently at school is going to transfer over to their right. job one day. And we talk about that a lot. That you know, employers got to have kid, you know, people that come in and know how to be on the job every day, and that's. You know, that's what we teach at school, too. And also be on time and stay the full day. I mean, I think, you know, it extends to, attendance uh, extends to the whole. Sure it does. The whole thing. Yeah. So, Do you yeah. have much trouble with that as far as students leaving early? Maybe for a doctor appointment or something like that. Right. But do you have many kids who leave early? Quite a few. Yeah. For any yeah. particular reason? Um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of things right. that I, I maybe I can't get my doctor's appointment right until you know it's 3 15 so I'll get them out a few minutes early um, and it may just be I don't want to be in the traffic right things like that so um, you know again the full the full day is so important because that comes back to that oh, 30 minutes a few times a month really starts to add mm -hmm. up and as Mr. Adams said you know we we teach bell to bell mm -hmm. and so or we don't take Fridays off and we don't take afternoons off Right. Do you try to have, and we're almost out of time, do you try to have more of the, uh, not the core subjects, not at the end of the day? Depends. I mean, you know, I know in middle school, that's not necessarily true mm -hmm. at all. Right. Um, in elementary school, we're still going all the way through. All the way through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know what? We're out of time. I can't believe it. I'm so glad you two right. could we come. We enjoyed Thank you. Come back Thank you for inviting us. us. Uh -huh. Just remember, attend today, achieve tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for listening and for watching.